It is November 17th. Just a month and a half ago, the Michigan Supreme Court, in a landmark decision, struck down the Emergency Powers of the Governor Act. They found that the way this law was written was unconstitutional. It violated what's known as the non-delegation doctrine. More simply put, it violated the separation of powers. In this instance, the legislature did not have the ability to hand over its authority to write laws to the executive branch. Now, a month and a half later, we are in a situation where Governor Whitmer has been using the public health code and a section within there that deals with epidemics to basically substitute the unilateral power that she lost in that Supreme Court decision. Now, the public health code that we're looking at states, if the director determines that control of an epidemic is necessary to protect the public health, the director by emergency order may prohibit the gathering of people for any purpose, and may establish procedures to be followed during the epidemic to ensure continuation of essential public health services and enforcement of health laws. Emergency procedures shall not be limited to this code. The first issue we have with this act and the way it's being used is that Governor Whitmer is using this act in a way that is way more far-reaching than what the statute allows. The Emergency Powers of the Governor Act, the way it was written, was exceedingly broad. And it was so broad, in fact, that it was unconstitutional as it was written. But what we're having here it was this public health code is not as broad, but the governor is pretending that it is. So, I, for example, I had discussions with a few people who were a bit surprised. They thought that these lockdown orders would go a lot farther. To which I replied, did you ever imagine a scenario where it would actually be illegal for you to have Thanksgiving dinner in your own house? I mean, think about this. If you have your parents over at your house, and one of your siblings families over at your house as well you could be subject to being put in jail for up to six months having a 200 dollars fine or both this is very shocking and it is highly unconstitutional and there is no way that the public health code is going to be found that it is written in a way to limit people in your own household this is america and we still have rights. The second problem we have here with how the public health code is being used, and in my opinion, this is a much bigger legal issue for the Whitmer administration, is again, we have a problem with the separation of powers. The governor, no matter how much she likes, does not have the authority to both write laws and enforce them. Now, I do have constituents that like these lockdown measures. I fully admit it. But here's something that I, I hope that those people that do like these orders keep in mind. There is nothing that prohibits you in a free country like the United States of America to lock yourselves in your own house and stay home. That is your God-given right. But we must really ask ourselves the fundamental question does the end justify the means if we get to, into a situation where we have erased all of the basic and fundamental liberties that are enshrined and enumerated in the bill of rights in the name of responding to covid 19 have we done the right thing in my humble opinion no these rights are basic to our human nature and they're fundamentally given to us by God, and they cannot be erased. It is highly debatable that these new orders will, in fact, be effective at combating COVID-19. This whole idea that a government can control a virus by controlling the daily activities of its citizenry itself is a very novel concept, and I don't think the data is in to show that it's actually effective. I have had a lot of constituents who have reached out to me demanding that I get these orders rescinded immediately. These types of disputes must be solved in the judicial branch. That being said, there will be opportunities 
uh, going forward that the legislature can can use to get the governor to change course. That being said, both of these avenues will take time. So what I urge you to do, if you have issues with these orders, if you don't like them, if you think they're unconstitutional, please let the governor know how you feel. Reach out to her, call her office, email her office. That is how you can make a difference. Until then, we're less than two years away of when there will be a gubernatorial election and you will be able to exercise your right to vote and change course that way. That being said, thank you and God bless.